Today I'm going to show you how to do a sky replacement in like three clicks in Photoshop. Seriously. And whether you're brand new, if you've just installed and downloaded Photoshop, you're a complete newbie, it's literally that easy. With the recent updates from Adobe, they're always giving us new and awesome things and the Luminar guys are freaking out right now because yes, it was just a matter of time before we got a sky replacement tool in Photoshop. Now before it could have been tedious and just a lot of work to do a sky replacement, but today, again, I'm gonna show you how to do it in three clicks. Let's check it out. Okay, as promised, here we are in Photoshop and I'm gonna show you how to change your sky or swap or replace your sky in just literally three clicks. So the magic to it is literally going up here to edit and heading down to sky replacement, clicking on that and that's it. You're, you're literally done. That's it. There's a million skies. You can use your own. We can swap that sky just by clicking that. It's going to do all the heavy lifting for us. And there are a ton of options. We can, as you can see here, play with it. We can change the temperature of it. We can make it cool. We can make it warm. We can change the scale. We can flip it left and right. We can literally do anything and everything you could expect to do in Photoshop just now a lot simpler, which is just fantastic. So before Luminar, this was one of the, the key features of, of Luminar 4 was the sky replacement. And now, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, they're going to be kind of running scared, hopefully um, bringing something to the table to catch up because this to me is just a total game changer. And uh, they've already got in here some of their own skies, as you can see here. Um, to throw in to do some dramatic ones you can again you can bring your own it's just a fantastic addition to an already awesome program and we can also as you can see down here we can play with the foreground so we can change our foreground lighting to match our basically our our, our entire photo give it the look of the the sky there and just like Luminar, it does a really great job at kind of blending the whole thing together as a global adjustment. But this uh, and everything here just makes it really that simple. And uh, if we click OK, what we want to do here is output to new layers, as you can see here. And really, it's literally created all these new layers for us just as simple as that. And if we want to, we can actually go ahead and play around um, with those layers and make adjustments from there. Um, do some masking, some, some layers and whatever we want to do, but it's literally that simple. So it's just a phenomenal update and I'm just so thrilled because, well, time is money. And I thought I'd show you a few examples because it's not always going to work perfectly. You know, it's going to be AI basically the algorithms is going to give you a chance to to do this But it's not always going to be perfect So let's give it a try on a few other ones and I'll show you exactly what I mean so you're gonna to have to play around with the horizon in some cases and In this case you can see it's doing a, a decent job to try and mask out the trees and whatnot It's not perfect because it's uh, it's not really sure where the horizon is. This is a bit of a tricky photo But um, you can play with it. You can like I said kind of mess with the edge shift and how much exactly you want to blend it. Again, this is a really extreme example and I wanted to show you just a few. So let's uh, move uh, let's move forward and show you uh, a few more and just to kind of show you what you can expect. But again, I'm just super thrilled with this and didn't expect it maybe this soon, but uh, look at that. Just like that, we can literally have a completely dramatic different looking image with just a few clicks and of course the purists are going to be furious about this because well they probably spent the last I know 20 years tediously masking out every little bit of the image but here we are in 2020 um, there is some good things coming out of it and for me this is one of them but like I said it's not always going to work perfectly for example, here we've got a reflection and we've got a horizon and it just, it doesn't know any better because it's not, you know, that smart yet. So take it for what it is and, uh, you know, use, uh, use it appropriately. And we'll just show you a few more examples here just of some stuff that I've taken. And again, you can use your own skies, like I might use this sky maybe on uh, 
the next image if I wanted, but it's just so, such a great option to just go ahead and completely change the look, the feel of an image because, well, you don't always get that perfect dramatic sky that you were wanting, of course. So it's just a really great option to, uh, to you know, make your, make your photos into something special. So let me know what you think, guys. Make sure you drop down in the comments what you think about this update and uh, let me know if you're going to be using it and whatnot. But for me, this is just an absolutely huge win right here. And uh, let's go ahead and check out the last few. And again, it's gonna be a little bit hit or miss. You might have to do some of your own masking. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm here trying to push the limits here of what, um, what you can do. And I think it does a pretty darn good job here, as you can see. So for me, this is just, this is awesome. The less I can do, uh, the faster, the better. So this is awesome. And let's check out a final image here. We've got a, obviously a building here, and this looks just like a crazy or almost fake image to begin with, but it's completely uh, straight out of camera right here. And let's see if we can blend in here with the building. And I think uh, for me, it does a pretty darn good job here. And it does do a little bit of blending, it looks like for, uh, for you, just to kind of blend in with the uh, foreground and the background, but you can go ahead and make your own adjustments here in the foreground adjustments over here. So change the lighting if you wanted to make it brighter or darker. And again, if you wanted to shift that edge or kind of fade it a little bit, depending how much or how little you want of that sky. Um, and there it is guys. So there, as promised, there's just a few clicks um, and you can go ahead and change your sky in a million different situations in a million different photos. So just another tool to be creative with to get you out of your box, to get you being and thinking a little bit differently, hopefully. And uh, again, for me, I think this is just an awesome and a huge win for uh, Adobe and everything uh, photography. So let me know what you think again down at the bottom, guys. And I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful for you. If you did, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you in the next one.